welcome to my studio and welcome to another edition of Art Discussion with me, Adelaide Demoa. I'm an artist and I like to probe the minds of other artists to find out what makes them tick. I like to ask them questions in order to find out how they overcome challenges in order to go on to have sustainable and sometimes successful careers, hence this series, Art Discussion. Now today's artist is a very charming young man by the name of Jeremiah Kwashi and I first met Jeremiah when I went to Ghana in 2016, so the end of 2016, and then I went again this summer, uh, so the summer of 2017, and that's when we did the interview. I was blown away by his charm, and you will be too when you watch the interview, but not only that, his talent. Jeremiah makes absolutely beautiful photorealistic re paintings of people usually within the vicinity uh, in which he's living in. And the paintings that he makes raise really important, critical questions about the conditions that the people or that the masses are living in at that moment in time. Now, I believe that Jeremiah is making culturally relevant and significant works. And I do believe that um, his relevance as an artist will become more and more apparent over time. So watch this space for what Jeremiah is doing because I think he's making fantastic work. Jeremiah graduated in 2007 from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, Ghana. It's a very prestigious university and in terms of art, the likes of El Anatsui and Ibrahim Mahama both graduated from there. Jeremiah is currently represented by 1957 Gallery in Accra, which is located at the lush and luxurious Kempinski Hotel in Ghana. Jeremiah has been exhibited nationally and internationally, including most recently at ArtX Lagos, a, a 154 art fair in New York, and he's shown in Munich and in Amsterdam as well. We're waiting for him to come to London. Jeremiah, come to London. Anyway, he also has work in international collections, including the Seth Day collection in Accra and also the Horn Museum in Florida. I'll let Jeremiah fill you in with the rest. Um, and we had a really interesting conversation. It lasted an hour, but you're not going to have to sit through an hour. But uh, yeah, I hope you en enjoy the interview as much as I did. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, you graduated in 2007, right, from KNUST, okay, and so um, after graduation did you go straight into working as an artist or did you, how did you survive? So practically yes, um, you know after school we do a year of national service, Yeah. so I did my service at the Kumasi Cultural Centre, um, we worked on a project which was art based, so I'd say somehow that was kind of taking me into becoming an artist. Mm. We did something called the Unity Ball. Unity Ball? Yes. So at the time in 2008, Ghana was hosting the Nations Cup. Okay. So uh, we came up with an idea where we represent um, images inspired by the 16 nations that were played. Okay. And so I had um, other artists also make paintings based on the various countries and we we made them on um, hexagons and so we put them together alongside um, um, we, we made it into a ball actually mm -hmm. so then you had um, Ghana you had all the other nations that were playing images that were like paintings about those countries um, we did our best to bring it to the opening ceremony we got here but and it gets so bureaucratic, it couldn't be part of what we wanted it to be. So eventually it kind of deteriorated. It was left in the stadium somehow. Oh dear. Yeah. So. But it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a worthwhile project. Yeah. Um, and so after that, um, I, I went to visit my sister in Spain. After spending a month in Spain, I said, hey, let me go do this thing. So I, that's, that's just around the time when I decided to be an artist. I had a commission. Um, an older friend of mine who wanted paintings of himself and his family. Mm -hmm. So he had commissioned me for, to make his himself and his wife. So that's what I had when I went to Spain. Okay. Came back, I worked on it. 
he paid me over like 30 percent more initially i didn't think i was going to be an artist what did you think you were going to be um maybe a communications guy or probably um an entrepreneur i have a lot of business ideas mm -hmm. ideas about business development that come to me naturally yeah so i can go into someone's establishment and see all the faults with it or what the person can do to improve mm -hmm. so that comes to me naturally so i thought probably i was going to do that um, but then in when i did my project in 2006 2007 mm -hmm. by the time i was like the uh, one of them the first five non-serious students in my class. First five not serious, not serious students. students. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I everybody knew, hey, this guy is going to do something else. And my my dad had the idea of probably going abroad, doing further studies. So there were all those things there. I was never serious in school. I could make the grades at least um, second class at top. I remember some of my lectures then angry with me because I didn't make a first class because I wasn't serious. I thought, hey, do I need a first class? So you're one of those annoying, clever people. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I, come, I come to the class late and I announce my coming. I drag the chair. <laughs> it just gets crazy. Um, I had all these funny ideas that I would always talk about. So. It was, it was fun. It was a fun class. We we had a very, I think we were the first class that had a very close-knit relationship with our, our lecturers. Okay. So, so this is university, right? Yeah, so this is university. Okay. So, um, you, you're, um, you said that you, you could have been an entrepreneur and you mm. could have been other things, mm. but what made you decide that you wanted to study art? Because I know, even um, having Ghanaian parents, mm. I know what they're like in terms of, oh, you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, blah, blah, blah. So what was it that made you decide, oh, actually, I want to study art and I want to be an artist? Okay, so I had, naturally, I had talent for art. So okay. I could draw anything. And yeah, so right from primary school, I was known as the artist, you know, so the other people who, or the other um, students who also knew how to draw, oftentimes would organize drawing competitions. And let the class judge who's best. Um, I remember in somewhere in primary six, um, there were about three of us um, a girl and two guys. So there was always that competition to say who was better. Mm -hmm. uh, in JSS, I excelled naturally in the um, technical drawing and you know, drawing related courses. So it was only natural for me to choose visual arts mm. after JSS. Um, there was no objection to that. Um, unfortunately, it was people who were not my parents who objected to that because I came out of GSS with eight ones, and that qualifies you to do like a science course. Okay, so that's really high grade. Yes, so I had a very good okay. grade. Um, so, hey, why did you do visual arts? That's what I always got. But when I also went to the secondary school doing visual art. I was also, the, le the, the tutors also found me quite impressive because my, uh, of how good my English at the time was. Mm -hmm. I don't think my English is that good. I mean, I don't think I've made progress the way I was supposed to make progress. But yeah, I was quite articulate. And um, also my math was good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're in official art class. So what are you doing here? Going on to, from 2008 onwards, mm -hmm. and you're a professional artist, you'll get commissions, and that's how you're surviving. Um, when did the relationship with 1957 Gallery come about, and how? Um, how did it start? Well, um, I had a call, mm -hmm. so they, they were interested in working with me. It took some time for me to get to understand what really it was, um, because I've been used to working with institutions rather than commercial galleries. I see. Um, because somewhere in 2012, 2011-2012, I was working closely with the Bookie Foundation. Yes. Yeah. Um, which resulted in um, working with another institution, which was um, SMBA okay. in Holland. So I, I, I understand the institution stock. And then I wasn't too 
working and selling my work. I preferred commissions. But by that time, in 2015, I sort of hated commissions. <laughs> <laughs> so probably, yes, it, it happened at the right time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we came to an agreement and the relationship started. Great. Yeah. It's an excellent gallery. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So what, what would you say have been, um, or what would you say was the biggest challenge that you've had to face so far since you started as an artist and then how did you overcome it? Well, um, I, I come from a middle class family. Mm -hmm. It was very challenging to not have um, fulfilled um, probably the wishes of the family by maybe going abroad and doing further studies. Mm -hmm. and, um, so then somehow should I say the funding got cut? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now I had to I had to struggle on my own, which then I didn't appreciate it as a good thing. But now. So what? How did you end up moving to Lagos? Um, so I had always been interested in Nigerian culture because um, and conditions, Nigerian conditions, because it's, it's quite different from Ghanaian conditions. Ghana is quite chilled. Everybody is relaxed. Of course, in Ghana, when you hear crime and things of the sort, you get shocked. Mm. How did it happen? But in Nigeria, it's like yeah. normal. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> you get robbed yeah. once, twice. Yeah, it's normal. You know, kind of thing. It's not crazy everywhere in Nigeria. Mm. Um, so I've been in and out of Nigeria a couple of times, and I realized it would be good to do a project there. Because I'm, I'm always interested in social conditions. Mm -hmm. and, um, my talking about social conditions is a way to also document history. So um, I realized that I needed to do something in Nigeria. I did a first project in Ghana which talked about the water problem. Exactly. Um, yeah, there are other problems we have, but I felt no, doing something elsewhere and me would be would be more point on. So that's when I decided to do to Nigeria. Then um, the gallery showed me at ArtX last year. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed by the level of interest Nigerians have in art. Yes. Like for me that was it. Yeah. Too many people came. Yeah. Too many. Yeah. So I realized, wow, this is a community that appreciated more or understood the value of art more than where I originally came from. So I was like, yeah, this should be the place I should be. So that was, that was what influenced my, my decision to go to Nigeria. But what would you say was your biggest achievement so far? Besides that? Well, it can be that if you want. <laughs> um, well, I'm proud of my solo show. Yeah. That's my first ever solo show. Um, 2012 in Holland, I had very good reviews for my project. It was just two pieces of work, one large one. But it led to another project in Suriname. It had so many, you know, um, newspapers in Brazil talked about it. So it was quite widespread. So I think, yeah, for me, that would be the greatest achievement. What does success in the art world mean to you? Okay, so I see success on different levels. Um, at any point in time that I um, achieve something, for me that would be success. For instance, when I achieved my first um, solo show, at that level I was very, I felt very, you know, uh, fulfilled. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm looking forward to my next project, which is the project in Lagos and all that. I think I would have a greater sense of fulfillment if that also happens. Mm -hmm. And then I have um, um, thoughts about you know taking a break and doing some experimental work and seeing how that also goes. Obviously, if I'm able to achieve that, that would also be a certain level of success. What might matter to you now is not what might matter to you in the future. And the circumstances, the conditions. Um, 
but then again in in the long run for me because my work focuses on social conditions and sort of documenting people at a time it is important that my work continues to speak that language and 50 years to come it's it's what will be used as a reference point to say oh at the time of so and so this is how people went about their daily lives. This, these were the challenges people faced. Can you tell me about your project in Nigeria? All right, so um, I've been fascinated about the idea of power for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And in the past, power rests with the monarchies. So a king can decide no one should go out to the end. Everybody has to stay and obey. And somehow people were engineered to even accept that. There were only a few occasions where people rose against the king, mm. which sometimes was detrimental to themselves. And so power solely rests in the hands of the king or the ruling class. Mm -hmm. um, but so I was also interested in making um, portraits of past kings and queens of African origin um, that had noted history. But then I went to Nigeria and within the period, um, I started thinking about power in the sense of you know, contemporary power. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have power in a contemporary sense? And it means a lot, it's very varied. Um, for instance, the president doesn't have absolute power. He has a certain measure of power, which sometimes is kept in check by even people around him. Yeah. And so, um, at a point in time where he also had to be probably made president, the people who had power were the ones who would make him president. Mm -hmm. So power keeps changing and shifting zones in the contemporary sense. So it's not an issue of once powerful, always powerful. Then also power rests in the hands of uh, people who influence society. Yes. So they might not be physically present, but they might be present virtually and still push people to do certain things. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, I was looking at musicians. Uh, some people actually have, have done bad things to themselves because of the music they listen to. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, some people are inspired to also do good things mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the music they listen mm -hmm. to. Um, people decide to walk, talk, or act like actors and actresses. Um, people decide to 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 maybe even take a certain routine that someone um, who is say um, uh, maybe a gym instructor or mm. something you know all these people have different levels of power that and they have their own small small countries mm -hmm. or even bigger ones for instance um, yesterday I was looking online and I realized um, I think Selena Gomez has about what, 124 million <laughs> followers on Instagram. That's bigger than Rano. <laughs> so if probably she said something and everybody want all of this 124 million people wanted to do something, yeah, it's it's it's, it's going to be disastrous. Yeah. Um, I can just imagine if if someone with that following or someone who is intending to do something bad. Yes. So power has now come to be with people that see where they can tap into it. Mm. And so going to Nigeria, I realized that there are so many powerful people. So many people who have following, who have influence, uh, who can turn around situations in Nigeria. So we have actors, musicians, um, politicians, you have uh, business people, all of these embody you know, power. And so I was thinking that as an artist, if I'm supposed to document people and social conditions, um, this is a situation that probably was not existent 50 years ago. Mm. And we don't know what's going to happen in the next 50 years. So I think it's important to document people of power. So people that I've come to learn about in Nigeria who are powerful should be able to be a part of this project. But then again, there were certain contrasts about it. Um, 
the fact that Nigeria being probably the most populous um, country, um, I don't know if in Africa, mm. I'm not too sure about that, but I mean probably one of the most populated countries, and also having um, a lot of money, lots of it. Yeah. <laughs> You see that in the cars they drive, the G wagons and all that. Um, it's this is a time that needs documenting. But then, like in Ghana, where you had, I mean, the capital city not having water. Mm-hmm. It's funny that in a country like Nigeria, you have issues with power generation. Yeah, and it had is it has its own complexities. Mm. Um, be it whether it's for political reasons or personal gain whatsoever these reasons might be there for me as an artist I'm not interested in those reasons what I'm interested in the fact that it is a condition yeah now what I do usually with my work is to present the condition and allow the discourse around it to flow so as an artist I'm very neutral I have a neutral position about whether it's good or bad if right now I could be a fairy godmother and grant you anything in terms of your art career right now, what would it be like the biggest dream? Basically, I just want to work. I just, maybe, maybe, maybe what I would wish for is to um, always have inspiration because most of the time I don't. I often lose it. So I gain it. I, 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 I think inspiration comes very little of the time mm. now for me. I don't know why, maybe as you grow older, I don't know what, what happens, but perhaps. It's not like I have um, a family of my own to say, okay, that's that's what's distracting me. Um, but I get the, the inspiration is not as much as it used to be. Mm. So if I could always get inspired, yes, then I would always produce work and it will be work that is relevant. Yeah. The others would just follow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you could go back to 2007 when you graduated, mm-hmm. what advice would you give yourself? I don't regret not being serious. I don't regret it that I wasn't serious in school. It was fun. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's ironical. It's, it's contributed to the discourse of even what I'm interested in as a person. The ironies that exist. So I'm an embodiment of that myself. Um, but the advice I would have given myself was that all the money I spent probably traveling, I should have bought more material. <laughs> then, before I came out of school, yeah. so that I'll have a lot to work with and wouldn't have to struggle that much in the first few years. I would have saved a lot. It's, it's important that artists always have an environment or a situation or condition that makes it easier for them to work. And so, if, if I knew ahead of time I'd have created that situation, yeah. and I probably wouldn't have had my first solo in 2016, mm. but I probably had it in maybe 2013. Yeah. And I may have had maybe two other solos of it, and I may have showed it in many other places of it. But what matters now is that, um, even though it's late, it's never too late, mm-hmm. so I still got to it. Yeah. And um, what advice would you give to somebody who is just starting out? Well, I give, I do give a lot of advice to people who start, who are starting out. The first question I ask them is, are you willing to be hungry? <laughs> <laughs> if it is yes, then I'll say be an artist. If it's no, then I say don't be an artist. So. Uh, to become an artist and a relevant one for that matter, it takes a lot of sacrifice Mm -hmm. and also it takes a lot of opportunity but you sacrifice such that you you open the doors for the opportunities to come for instance, if you've not worked no one gets to see it if everything is in your head, no one gets to see Mm -hmm. it and say, oh yeah, this is a good artist Mm -hmm. if you've not talked about it no one gets to know what you're working on Mm -hmm. Um, so, young artists should, number one, not be conscious about what you're going to get. 
because then as soon as you focus on that, your art fails to be authentic. Mm -hmm. They should also be willing to let go of um, life's luxuries in order to be able to achieve a certain level of success. Um, they should also not look at their peers who are in other fields of study to judge themselves. Because that would be absolutely wrong. And they have to be strong You yeah. have to be resilient. Because I would say that demons are going to come. <laughs> <laughs> they are going to come from all angles. They could be family. They could be... Yeah, so the forces are going to come. Especially if they feel that there are other things you could have done. You maintain that focus. And you never give up. And also when you start a car your career as an artist, there are people in the art world, I have faced that, who would say, no, what you're doing is not right. Do this, don't do this, don't do that. If you listen to these people, you're going to lose focus. Mm. But if you maintain what you want to do, these very people are going to come back mm -hmm. and congratulate you. And I have had many circumstances like that. So that's the advice I give to you. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> that was Pleasure. great. Hello, welcome back. Thanks very much for joining me for that edition of Art Discussion with the lovely Jeremiah Kwashi. I told you you would enjoy the interview. Please do subscribe to my channel because by subscribing you get to keep up to date with the latest interviews like this one and you just never know where I'm going to end up. Until next time, take care. Bye.